over the billions of years that this planet has been in existence. It has seen many species come and go. Some of these creatures are very large and formidable, whereas some may seem very insignificant. There are often many complicated reasons as to why a species goes extinct, such as climate change and loss of habitat. In recent times, humans have been one of the main factors behind extinctions, and unfortunately we are losing more and more species each year. In today's video, I will be focusing on animals that have unfortunately left this planet, and I will be taking a look at what would happen if they were given a second chance. Some extinct creatures could do well in the modern day, and in some cases they could even benefit humans. For our first prehistoric animal, we will be heading over to New Zealand, and we will be taking a look at Hast Seagull. This bird lived on the South Island of New Zealand, and it was the largest eagle known to have existed. It had an estimated weight of around 15 kilograms, and this is 6 kilograms larger than the harpy eagle. Famously, New Zealand has always been a place ruled by birds, and one of the main animals that this eagle preyed on was also a bird. Moas are an extinct group of flightless birds, and they were endemic to New Zealand. The two largest species reached around 3.6 meters tall, and they weighed around 230 kilograms. Hast seagull needed to be very large to prey on these birds, but this size would also be their downfall. Larger animals of course need more food, and as they were so dependent on the mowers, if the mowers disappeared, so would these eagles. There are a few theories behind this eagle's extinction, but one of the leading theories is that it was human-related. Early human settlers hunted the mowers, and eventually they became extinct on the South Island. As these large eagles were so dependent on these birds, they also went extinct as well, and it really is a shame that they're no longer with us. Strangely, if the Hast seagull was brought back today, I not only think that it would be successful, but I also think it could help with the invasive species problem in New Zealand. When this eagle was found in New Zealand, New Zealand had very few native mammals. There were only really a few bat species, and then some migratory marine mammals. Unfortunately, today there are many mammals in New Zealand, and these mammals cause a lot of damage to the ecosystem. One of the animals that has caused the most damage is the common brush-tailed possum, as this mammal both competes with the native birds and also feeds on their eggs. Today, there are millions of these possums in New Zealand, and these possums could be prey for Hast seagull. Today, the harpy eagle is one of the largest eagles on this planet, and this eagle mostly feeds on mammals in the form of primates. This shows us that this form of predator-prey relationship is very plausible, and the Hast seagull could control the number of brush-tailed possums. You could argue that this prey would be too small for Hast seagull, but as these possums are found in such large numbers in New Zealand, it could sustain them. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below, but I'm sure most people would want to see this eagle back in New Zealand today. For our next prehistoric creature, we will be heading over to Eurasia, as we will be taking a look at the cave bear. The cave bear was found in Europe and Asia during the Pleistocene, and it became extinct around 24,000 years ago. This species is called the cave bear because many of its fossils were found in caves, and experts believe that this species spent more time in caves than the brown bear does. The cave bear was a very large and formidable species, and was thought to be similar in size to a polar bear or a Kodiak bear. It's thought that some large specimens could weigh up to a ton, but strangely this bear was not the fiercest predator. The cave bear was thought to have been largely herbivorous, mostly feeding on plants and roots. It's thought that it might have also eaten fish, insects, and small mammals, but cave bears did not hunt and stalk large animals or humans. This would mean that it had a very similar lifestyle to the modern-day goby bear, but it was a lot larger. Once again, there are a few theories as to why this bear went extinct. Some of them are human-related, and some of them are climate-related. It's thought that some of these bears were preyed upon by other predators, such as cave hyenas and wolves. The cave bear also had to compete for cave shelters, and one of the animals that it had to compete with were humans. It's also thought that the cave bear's diet could have led to its demise, as bears with a more omnivorous diet have survived to the modern day. Climate change could have led to their main food sources disappearing, and this would lead to the bears disappearing as well. Personally, I feel that if the cave bear was given a second chance today, it could be quite successful. 
Today, some large predators across Europe and Asia struggle, and this is mostly due down to human-wildlife conflict. When a predator starts feeding on livestock, humans usually retaliate, and this usually means that the predators are legally or illegally killed. This is why some bears have disappeared from large parts of Europe and Asia, but the cave bear wouldn't have this problem. As it was a more herbivorous species, there would be less conflict, and it may even leave livestock alone. Modern-day brown bears are still found across large areas of Eurasia, and these bears would be slightly smaller than the cave bear. The cave bears and the brown bears could come into conflict, but it would be interesting to see them in the same ecosystem. It's possible that this bear could still cause problems by raiding homes or farms, and although it was thought to be mainly herbivorous, of course this doesn't mean it was harmless. You could make a strong argument for quite a few extinct large bears, but this species is possibly the least terrifying. For our final species, we will be staying in Eurasia, and we will be taking a look at the Irish elk. The Irish elk also goes by the name of giant deer, and it is one of the largest deer to have ever lived. Even though it's called the Irish elk, it was found across Eurasia, and it's thought to have gone extinct around 8,000 to 7,000 years ago. Even though it's called an elk, it's not thought to be closely related to any modern-day elk, and some argue that its closest relative is the red deer, and others argue that its closest relative is the fallow deer. This species stood around 2.1 meters tall at the shoulders, and carried the largest antlers of any known deer. Some measured 3.65 meters from tip to tip, and weighed in at around 40 kilograms. Even though this elk was very large, it had quite a few natural predators, and marks on fossil bones suggest that it was prey for hyenas. It's also thought that bears and cave lions would take them down, and it's strongly believed that we also hunted them. During the late Pleistocene, it was believed that these elk were already uncommon, and some believed that their downfall was due down to their large antlers. These large antlers would make it hard for them to adapt to woodland areas, and it could make them relatively easy to hunt. It's also thought that a warming climate could have negatively affected this species, and eventually they disappeared for good. Strangely, if this species was brought back today, I think it would do very well in some parts of Europe. In the UK, famously, we have hunted most of our large animals to extinction, but some of the largest animals that remain are deer. Without large predators to think about, the Irish elk could thrive, and there's plenty of perfect habitat in places such as Scotland. As this species was also found in Siberia, it could be used for Pleistocene rewilding, and it really would be amazing to see these magnificent creatures roam the earth once again. Of course, there are plenty of animals that I could have included in this video, so if you know of any, let me know down in the comments below as I was thinking about including creatures such as the American cheetah and the giant extinct lizards of Australia. If you liked this video, let me know down in the comments below and I will make a part two. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.